Hi, I'm David Lawrence, and in this video, we're diving into step training, and we're gonna get you walking. Okay, so when we're talking about prosthetic step training, I wanna go over a few basic uh, ground rules for us first, and then we'll talk about the specifics of how I go through this process. One thing that's really important is that if you haven't seen already our amputee pre-gait motor control exercises or amputee motor standing motor control exercises video, you need to see that. You need to look at that because it's gonna talk about proprioception and a lot of awareness things that I'm gonna assume you know as we go through this process. So check out that video if you haven't. That'll really help you with what we're gonna talk about here. Second thing I want you to understand is that no matter what technology we're working with, we are gonna basically treat teach the person to walk the same way. I don't teach a microprocessor gait or a below knee gait or an above knee gait. We teach human gait mechanics, getting the technology to do the best we can towards that technology. And the last thing is age. You might think, oh well, gosh, you're treating one person in a certain way. Nope, I teach human gait mechanics the same way. Eight years old to 80 years old, it doesn't matter. You're gonna get the same basic technology training or technique on training is probably a better word. And I want you to understand that. You do make variations based on age or, or a person's activity level, but the principles of the mechanics are the same. Okay? So with that being said, we're going to get started. And how do we get started? We start in a position from our last video of finding neutral, where a patient is. But now we have to look into stepping. And I get a question a lot from people is, do I learn to step with my right foot first or my left foot first? My prosthetic first or my non-prosthetic first? I tend to teach someone to teach step first with their non-prosthetic leg. The reason is because we always want to learn and establish stance before swing. In other words, we want load of the prosthetic so you get the technology load energy back. If I learn to pick up the prosthetic and just step it forward or carry it forward, I tend to repeat that same pattern of just carrying the prosthetic. What I want you to learn to do is how to load the prosthetic, get the energy back from it, and let it carry a lot of its own weight. So with that process in mind, I want to start with the idea of how do I learn to load the prosthetic completely. So, Tracy, what I'm gonna have you do is just step back about half a step. That's plenty right there. And she's in a position where she's got that prosthetic a little bit in front of her. And we're gonna go from a position, and not a real wide stance. If someone's just getting started, you can keep it a pretty narrow stance like this to get them to feel for it. And you also notice where my hands are, on her pelvis. This is where the mechanics are going to occur, where I can help her get the confidence to put her body weight in the right position. I don't wanna be standing back from her. I wanna be in a position where she can feel confident to really get on the prosthetic. Because what we're gonna do here from the very beginning is learn how do I load the prosthetic. it will feel very comfortable where she is right now because all her weight's on her sound limb. But to get her to bring that weight forward onto the prosthetic gets into a trust factor. And what I need her to do is come all the way to what we call mid stance or pylon vertical. That pylon should be vertical. To Tracy, when she first starts, neutral pylon will feel like it's back here. She won't really want to commit onto that prosthetic. So that's why you see we have mirrors all around here, and we're gonna use mirrors to help Tracy see as she comes forward to get that pylon vertical. Once it's vertical, the next level of commitment is you'll notice that her other leg is straight. If she relaxes that leg, that's really what we call pre-swing. This is normal gait, mid-stance, pre-swing on the other side. But to relax this knee, she had to fully commit her weight to that prosthetic. And that sounds simple, but it's not simple if it's something you haven't done a lot of. So I want you just to shift your weight back, step back just a little bit farther, a little bit more than that. There you go, give yourself a little bit of room to work. Now, pylon's leaning back, she's just made initial contact. I want you to bring your weight forward, Tracy, come all the way into pylon vertical, relax your other leg, right? And it should come into that position. This is a neutral, stable position. If she doesn't, get herself all the way to pylon vertical, she won't be completely balanced on top of the prosthetic. So all we're doing, and this can take time, just to repeat this process over and over. Someone could be standing at their kitchen sink, they could be using a walker, lots of different mechanisms to simply go through this process of initial contact into mid stance, true mid stance with your other leg relaxed. That means your hands are on for support, but you're letting your other leg relax and get ready to take a step. From that process, we then wanna finish stepping. So Tracy, what I'm gonna have you do is come forward. You're gonna load that leg, find pylon vertical. Your other leg is totally relaxed. And then you're simply gonna go ahead and step through. But at this point in time, you still keep a lot of the weight on the prosthetic side. We wanna see that, that line across the metatarsals or where your toes meet your foot. 
that there's a break there, there's pressure there. That pressure is the energy in that prosthetic or bending that prosthetic foot to get energy back from it. If I just relax all her weight off of it, it's basically a dead leg. There's no energy gonna come back from that foot. I wanna keep her in that position. And notice where I'm at with my hands. Again, I'm pressing down and keeping helping her feel the pressure on that prosthetic while my other hand on her other hip is helping bringing her pelvis forward a little, creating that rotation. Now I'm gonna have you step back, Tracy, and we're gonna do that all in one motion. So she's here, nice and strong. She all her weight on the leg, come forward, let that knee bend, take the step, keep the weight on the prosthetic, and finish right there. That is what we call stance phase. That is taking that prosthetic from heel load, come all the way back again, one more time, and a little bit farther back, there you go, thank you. All, heel, that, all the weight on the heel load, you're coming forward to mid stance, take the step, all the weight into terminal stance, all the weight's on the prosthetic, and she's ready now to move forward with the next step. So, with that in mind, step back just a little bit, Tracy. Now, I would have somebody repeat that action over and over and over again. Lots of repetitions, get the feel for it. I'll put my hands in place to help her feel the pelvic action, and then I'll talk to her about getting that same feeling of repeating that motion yourself, and just getting over and over and over of what that motion feels like. So, if we've got stance phase, what have we done? We've learned how to load the prosthetic, and now we gotta learn how to get the energy back from it. Because we don't wanna load it and just leave it on the ground. We wanna load it, and we're gonna get the energy back, which takes us into swing phase. If I'm not gonna tote or carry or pick the leg up and move it forward, I need the energy that I've just put into the foot to begin to move the foot forward. So swing phase then is taught very basically. I'm gonna put my foot on top of her foot for a second. And there's a reason for this. One of the negatives of a prosthetic limb is they will not plant our flex. They won't actively plant our flex in terminal stance. If you stand on the heel of a mall of a single axis ankle, that foot will go down or plant our flex or point to the ground. But in, in this situation, any prosthetic that we have today, once you get into toe load or terminal stance position, the foot's gonna at best hold neutral. It will not go into plantar flexion. Now, why is that so important? Is because when you and I move forward and we move our pelvis forward, our foot plantar flexes or points down a little bit before we leave the ground. Why does that occur? It occurs so that our knee will bend passively as our hips move forward. What I do to move forward and what she does on this side to move forward is simply move her hips forward and that leg will bend and step forward. However, with the prosthetic side, if we're not careful, when she brings her hip forward, the leg will just slide across the floor, right? It won't even, come on, pick up just a little bit for me. It'll just come forward and slide that foot without letting the knee bend, right? So what we wanna do is keep her in contact with the ground. So when she's here, I wanna come back to that hip bone that's in the front and say to Tracy, I just want you to bring that hip fo forward at me. Don't pick your leg up, just bring your hip forward. As you do, I'm gonna help her feel that what happens is that knee wants to bend. And you notice it bends passively. I'm not telling Tracy I want you to bend your knee. That's a mistake. If she's gonna to try to bend her knee, her hip will have to go backwards to push her hip forward, and, or to push her knee forward, excuse me. What we want from her is to say, Leave that leg kind of behind you, a lot of weights on the toe, bring your hip at me. As you bring your hip at me, that knee will bend. If it bends passively, your, her energy or her weight is still moving forward, which is gonna allow her to take the step here in a second. So again, Tracy, I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna put a little pressure on your hip. I want you to push into my hand. There you go, come right at me, and that knee bends. You don't have to try to make it bend, it bends itself. Again, so a mistake we have for people is you kick the leg forward or you make the knee bend. You don't wanna do that. Push that hip at me as you do, boom. You can see that knee, all she has to do, this is her power. That trigger of that hip coming forward and she now has a powerful step moving forward. And we'll go back again. So what we're gonna do now, Tracy, is since we've released some of the energy of that foot into making the knee bend, we wanna take it all the way into a step. So this time what you're gonna do as you're pushing into me and you can feel that knee bend, as not after it bends, as it's beginning to bend, take a step. Don't kick, don't throw, do it, don't anything crazy. Just take a tap, really just take a normal step. All right, so here we go. We bring that hip forward, and you feel it start to bend, step, and land, and we come all the way forward. Now, you'll find a lot of people will step and leave that leg stuck out in front of them. Again, they're not under load. The leg's not really committed to the next step. You always want to take that step and help the patient with their hips finish coming all the way up on top of the prosthetic or fully loading on it. That puts them right into position for the next step to occur. So we'll step all the way back, and we're going to repeat that process. So there you go, right about, now step forward with this guy. We're gonna start at that point in time. There you go. I'm gonna move my foot out of the way. I'm gonna have her push her hip into my, there you go, feel a bend, take a step. 
and come through. Now, you'll notice there a little bit of a drag and scuff. A lot of that's going to occur because the timing is going to be slow at this point in time and a little bit off. So don't get worried if there's a little bit of a scuff of the floor. Right now, I just wanted to get you the mechanics. We'll fix that scuff on the floor by simply how she moves her pelvis through the motion. So go ahead and step back again. There you go. Just stay right there. Again, the key, the trigger for your walking power, Tracy, comes from right here. So you bring that point right into me. There you go. Step. Boom. <laughs> now, what did I do differently right there? What you couldn't see on the video is, and what Tracy felt, is I gave her a lot of pressure. And as she was pushing into me hard, I took the pressure away. That means her hip came through much faster than she would have thought it was going to. And as it did, boom, that leg just jumped forward. It almost had to put no energy in it. The leg almost had a life of its own and jumps forward. That's what we want it to do. We want it to move. We want it to go. But what I have to do is learn that my, my manual skills of applying pressure, pulling her through the motion if she needs it. But if I can tell she can do it, give her some pressure and then get out of her way and allow all that pressure to move forward and the step occurs. And that step occurs, the leg is going to take off. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to put those things together. So I just want you to step back for me, and we're going to take a couple of small steps. A little bit, we're going to start kind of in neutral, as if you were going to start walking. And if I'm working with somebody, I'm going to start in this position where, again, I'm here. I've got to be out of her way, right? So I've got to be able to get out of her way at the same time. But at the same point, I need her to get the mechanics of getting started. So your first step is going to start with this side, exactly. So come back. And I want you to think you're going to do a little shift into the prosthetic to feel the weight. And you're going to, again, don't ignore that. You're going to learn that from the last video. You really have to understand your foot position in space. But what I want you to do is a lot of weight on that prosthetic. Step forward with your right foot. There you go. Push your hip into me. Take that step. Good. Keep coming. Press into me. There you go. Press into me. Good. Turn it around. Now, I can do the same thing from behind her. So I'm in a position here where I'm going to say the same thing, Tracy. All I want you to think about is that your hips are moving. You're thinking about load on the prosthetic and getting my hips moving. So you're going to shift into the prosthetic a little bit. Take that step forward. Push that hip forward into my hand. Take that step. Good. Push forward into my hand. Take that step. There you go. Push forward. Take that step. Push forward. Take that step. Excellent. Come back around to me. We'll come right up to here. There you go. Perfect. So the key with this, when someone's getting started, is that there's, this can get somewhat confusing. Gosh, all these different things I think about. If you break it down and keep it simple, you want to think about three things when we're getting started. Two we've already talked about, and one we're going to start here in just a second. The first is load. I've got to load the prosthetic. If I don't think about putting a dent in the floor every time I walk, all right? Some people will talk about putting like a, think like it's a cockroach underneath the knuckle of your big toe and I'm going to crunch it. Whatever it takes to feel pressure and you feel like, man, I'm walking heavy on that prosthetic. You won't be more than, as much as you think you will, but that load is going to make the device respond to you. The second thing is your power doesn't come from lifting the leg. The power comes from energy into the ground and pulling the trigger from right here at your hip. If that hip rotation occurs under load, bang, you can see the prosthetic and feel the prosthetic jump forward. It wants to move. If I unload the prosthetic and lift and carry it, I've lost all that energy, right? So my principles are, number one, if you're thinking, oh, gosh, too many things to think about, just think about load the ground. Load the ground, put a dent in the floor. If I do that, that'll get you going. Number two, if you're saying, okay, that's pretty good. Every time I come off of step forward, terminal stance, I'm on my toe, I want to think all my power is right here. I'm going to move my hip forward, and that leg's going to respond. All right? If I go just from my hip, and I think nothing else, nowhere else in the cycle, but I move that hip forward, and that leg is going to respond for me. All right? So step back. And the last component is, if you've got that, which is what we talk about now, is bringing the arms into the equation. Because when somebody walks, they obviously have good leg swing if we're getting the pelvis moving, but many times they've come off of walking with crutches or on a walker, and so they walk very stiff, very rigid. They're afraid of falling, but they're also got very used to my arms don't swing when I walk. So when you get somebody to say, oh gosh, how do I get that sense of arm swing back? This is more confusing than you'd think. If you've ever tried to think about swing your arms correctly and walk, you realize it actually messes you up much of the time. So we don't want to overthink this process. But I want to say to Tracy, just this general idea, if you're going to get started and think, since we're going to step forward with this, first, this foot first, all I want you to think about is as you take that step, I'm going to slide this hand forward. That's all I want you to think about. Don't do anything more than that. Don't overthink it. Just do that. Because that counter rotation of the shoulders coming forward counters the pelvic rotation. And that's where power comes from when you walk. So when this hip comes forward, 
that leg, that hand goes forward. And then we just repeat that process. So we're just gonna take two steps where you're gonna take a step and then step with the prosthetic. So you're gonna go ahead and step and step, boom. Just that idea. Get that idea of doing that a few times, that sense of getting the legs and arms to move separate from each other and opposite. The other way to do that is when someone gets away from the parallel bars, is this idea I like to do when you're here and saying, when I take my very first step, all I wanna think about is I'm gonna step with this foot. As I take that step, I'm gonna reach for it like I'm gonna shake someone's hand, mm -hmm. right? And I wanna reach for it like I'm gonna shake someone's hand that I like, <laughs> right? This isn't gonna be a like, oh, like a wimpy thing. You're gonna be step forward, reach forward. I want you to feel that arm go forward. And then all I'm gonna do is reach forward to shake their hand, and on my second step, there you go, I'm gonna step forward and reach out to shake their hands, and then I'm gonna relax. I don't wanna walk like a robot. I just wanna think, shake, shake, relax. If I've got those arms moving a little bit, they'll contend to keep on moving. Now as a therapist, how I wanna work on that is come up here, Tracy, and we're gonna step forward just a little bit and turn around right there. And she's in this position, and I've got her in a position, I wanna be here at her shoulders. Now remember, we talked about pelvis. That's really important for her to get that sense of pelvic control. But once she starts to get that pelvic motion, I want her to come back into not a stiff and rigid walk, which means rotation of the shoulders is what gives me arm swing. So I have to be a little bit coordinated, so if she's gonna step with her right foot first, I wanna step with her, and I'm gonna give her a little bit of shoulder action. So step back. So all we're gonna do is go ahead and step. Good, and step. So that's all I'm doing, just relax, just relax. And I'm really doing that for her. Go ahead and turn around and come back. I can do the same here, just walk right at me. Good, good. I'm just getting out of her way. Perfect. But that motion to get her to overthink it, some people will get worried about that with the arm action, and that motion will create a loss of pelvic action. So you have to come back to make sure she still has this feeling. Go ahead and step right back to the middle. So when she's here, yeah, that's good. That step action is gonna come forward and be very aggressive. The last thing we wanna talk about on this is the fact of pelvic rotation and pelvic power. When you're walking or moving, you have to remember that most of your power comes from your hips and comes from rotation of your hips. And we know this from sports, right? If you think of anybody hitting a, hitting a baseball or hitting a golf ball, you don't do that with your arms, right? You do that by bringing your hips through the motion. And you find that's where her power comes from. So ultimately, Tracy's best power is gonna come from as she's walking, is this pelvis always driving forward? I'm gonna always check that. So if she's gonna walk, go ahead and just walk at me. And if I'm here, just go ahead and walk at me, and I create a pressure right there, she should be able to just push me right out of the way. Push me right out of the way. Push me right out of the way. Good, turn around. Same thing going back. As she's walking, go ahead and walk. If I create a pressure here, she should push. See, I can stop her. So she should push me right out of the way. There you go, Tracy. Push me right out of the way. Good, same thing. One more time, coming back. So I create some pressure. Keep coming at me. And pressure, pressure. There you go. Push me out of the way. Oh, there you go. Push me out of the way. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So you can feel the power in her step. As she starts to really drive that hip forward, she just drives me right out of the way. Why is that important? That's important not only for good mechanics and good energy conservation, but also a lot of amputees don't like to walk in public where there's a lot of people around. They feel like if they're gonna get bumped, they're gonna get knocked over. So the power in their walk comes in that pelvic rotation. That pelvic rotation is what keeps you moving forward if you bump into something. It's not like, oh, I'm knocked off balance. I still have strength and control. Thanks for watching, and we hope that you found this helpful. This video is part of a series on prosthetic interventions, ranging from managing the residual limb after amputation to running with a prosthesis. We encourage you to view our other videos in this series and to share them as well. To stay up to date on our latest content, click the link in the corner to subscribe and let us know what you think in the comments section below.